Now we're talking to uh, Thomas Murphy, he's senior editor at WordsOuters.com, and uh, we're going to talk about the top 10, I mean, I, I don't know if it's a top 10, but like the best interiors for 2015. How are you, Tom? Good, good. Very good. Thank you, Javier. No, thank you for taking the time to do this. Very interesting list, as always. I mean, you've been doing this for a few years now, right? Yeah, this is the fifth year that we've picked the awards 10 best engines, or I'm sorry, 10 best interiors. We've been doing 10 best engines now for uh, 21 years, uh, but we started the interior focus uh, five years ago because we really saw a need for it. And also, um, our company, Wards, had uh, taken over the Auto Interiors Conference here in Detroit, uh, which is held each spring, and um, we decided that we really needed to kind of, uh, you know, step up the, uh, the evaluations of interiors, the state of interiors, basically. And uh, so that's that's what our competition is all about. We're looking yeah. At, you know, and I think it's very, uh, it's, it's very useful information for consumers who are looking for cars, because now you can get like a Toyota Corolla, for example, for like not very, a lot right. of money. And the interior is fantastic in that car. So, I mean, it's very insightful to, to learn more. Like sometimes people don't think that one brand or, or car model will have something nice and this is really useful for that right yeah and we're very um you know we're very cognizant of uh cost uh there is no price cap in our list so you know, like last year we had a rolls royce uh, that, that actually did make the list uh but we really want um each year to have bread and butter vehicles on the list yeah uh, that, that that have very impressive interiors um, and so a Kia doesn't compete directly with, with the Rolls Royce, but a Kia is going to kind of in, in our own little, uh, subcategories, we think about, okay, um, this Kia needs to compete with the Honda and the Hyundai and the Toyota yeah. within its own segment. So that's, that's kind of how we, that's, that's how we, uh, create yeah, but... categories without actually creating categories. Cause sometimes we will um, evaluate a number of vehicles in one category that, um, you know, that just happen to have all new interiors, but none of them in process, you know. None I see. Us, yeah. Uh, none of them make the list for whatever reason. So how many cars did you evaluate for, for every year or for this year uh, awards? Yeah, well, it's um, this year we had 42. So uh, that's 42 vehicles with all new interiors or interiors that were significantly improved from the prior model year. So um, any interior that hasn't been touched or hasn't been improved on is not in the competition. So considering, um, you know, 42 uh, interiors being all new, um, you know, just having the, you know, the staff uh, and the time for the staff to evaluate that many interiors, it's, uh, you know, it's quite a commitment. Um, so each, each year, the field is going to differ depending on um, who has, you know, who has the new interiors. Um, yeah. So, for instance, we haven't had many pickup trucks. Uh, as you know, in the industry, there there were not a ton of, of new pickup trucks uh, launching for a number of years. And then uh, the Ram launched uh, three years ago, and that made our list. The uh, GMC Sierra launched last year, and that made our list. This year, the F-150 launches and also the Colorado, the, the uh, yeah. uh, Chevy Colorado on the GMC Canyon. We picked the Canyon, uh, which made our list, as did the F-150 King Ranch. Now, that doesn't mean that, okay, every time a, you know, a new pickup truck is going to launch, it's going to make the list. It just so happens that these are really nice truck interiors. Uh, <laughs> they're, you know, they're, they're a lot different than, you know, than the truck interiors of the past. Yeah, I actually drove the High Country Silverado last week. And oh my God! I mean, that car is like a cabin of a jet, of a private jet. I mean, it's really amazing that it's a pickup truck and has that that yeah. a magnificent interior. So, well, it's, just, you know, it's yeah. really fascinating what's happening in pickup trucks because uh, there's suddenly this emerging market for sixty thousand dollar pickup trucks. Uh, you know, the King Ranch uh, that, that that we just put on our list for the F one fifty that was um, over sixty thousand dollars. The uh, the Ram. 1500 Larry Longhorn a few years ago that made our list. Again, that was $55,000. And apparently the automakers, they, they say, we can't make these things fast enough. We can't make these high-end trucks fast enough uh, because people really want them. People who, who are going to be towing horse trailers or expensive boats or whatever, 
they don't want a crappy old truck. You know? I know. <laughs> they want something, something that really says something about them. So they, they want the premium leather and the really nice wood and, uh, you know, a lot of electronic features inside as well. Yeah, so uh, speaking of which, uh, the criteria for it's like new interiors, but also, I guess, technology, as you just mentioned, also, I guess, materials and all that, right? So what else did, did you take into consideration? Yeah, we look at fit and finish. So, you know, we look at build quality. We look at the seams, you know, where the where the headliner meets up with the, uh, what we call the A-pillar trim and the B-pillar trim, the, basically the, the pillars that hold up the roof of the car. Um, those those pillars, uh, you know, which, which of course hold, hold the mirrors in place or the, the windows in place as well, those, those pillars require a certain kind of trim yeah. that often will not match up with what's on the headliner and it, and it you know, of course won't match up with what's on the door trim either. So, you know, we look at those themes. How, how well did they integrate all these different types of trim? Um, we look at color matching, you know. Sometimes you see that 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 colors don't always match on the interior. So, you know, we will mark down points for that. Oh, within uh, the same materials, you mean? Or like people's preferences? Because I've seen some cars that yeah. like <laughs> the combination of colors is not, but I guess it's by choice sometimes, huh? Right, right. Yeah, well, that, yeah, you're right. Uh, sometimes it's, you know, different different colors or different materials. Say, you know, maybe there's a, there's a plastic that's supposed to made up to another vinyl surface or, uh, you know, some some other surface and, and it's supposed to look similar colored and, and if it doesn't that it's kind of off putting. That's that's not what what we like to see. But yeah. um so so yeah, fit and finish, as I mentioned, value is one of our uh you know is one of our uh, criteria, uh safety. Um also um you know the the most important category for us is styling and aesthetics, design. Does everything flow? You know, does does it look like the door like the door panels, do they kind of flow neatly into the instrument panel? Um, does the center console flow neatly up into the center stack of the instrument panel? Do the seats match up with, with everything else? So you know, there's, there's pretty much a holistic view that we take on interiors, and and that's what, yeah. that's what we're looking for. So um, um, in the list, uh, you have by alphabetical order because there are no specific categories, I guess. The BMW i3, I mean, there's like, uh, I, I can understand that. I like talking about materials. They're incorporated a, a lot of new things in that car, the BMW i3. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, BMW i3 is, uh, is, is very futuristic. Um, it, you know, it's using materials that none of us have ever seen uh, on the inside of a car before. Uh, Recycled pop bottles um, are used to make the fabric, and, and also there's um, a certain type of uh, uh, environmentally friendly canning uh, material used to process the leathers, and uh, the, I think it's a uh, olive leaf extract that's used to can that leather. Um, so, so there's that, and then, and then they also recycle yeah, I... some of the uh, you know the instrument panel. So it's pretty amazing what they did with the BMW mm -hmm. i3 and um, the first time I got into that car I thought this looks pretty bizarre I'm not you know I'm not so <laughs> sure about this I'm not sure I'm ready for this but after you after you spend some time in it um, it's very comfortable and, and you kind of get used to it and pretty soon you realize yeah this is this is into the future this is um It's just something like we've never seen before, but it's a very nice interior overall. Yeah, so uh, we're gonna run, we're running uh, out of time, like we have a couple more minutes here. You have the Chrysler 300, the Fiat F 150 King Ranch that you mentioned, GMC Canyon SLT, the Honda Fit, which is the least expensive in the list, then the Jeep Renegade, yep. the Kia Sedona, the Mazda 6, and the Mercedes Benz C Class, and the Murano. So the Fit, right. the least expensive and the most expensive, the Mercedes. I mean, any particular thing short like that impressed you in, in both those two cars? Yeah, um, yeah, and I'm glad that you mentioned that. There, there is no ranking from one to ten. So yeah, it's it's all alphabetically ordered just because number one is is as valuable as number ten. It's not like you know there's a ranking there. So um, yeah, in terms of the Honda Fit, um, we just feel that that interior compared to everything else that's on the market, which would be like the Nissan Versa uh, and also the uh, Toyota Yaris. Yeah. Um, you know the the, the Chevy Spark has you know has made our list in the past, uh, but but the fit is just really 
really well done. And, and ever since it launched in the U.S. for the first time, I think it was in 2007, um, it, it's just a, an interesting package with a high roof. you got the second row seats that, that fold up and lock in place, uh, which is unlike, you know, most interiors. Usually you'll see the, the seat backs just fold down flat. But in this case, you can you can either go seat back down flat, so the whole cargo floor is flat, or you can put the seat bottoms upright, yeah. which then frees up a big, um, you know, big open area there in the second row, which is really just clever, you know, inexpensive packaging that it, that it, it just makes that interior very flexible. And you know, the materials are, are well, you know, they're well done. Uh, the fit and finish, as is always the case for Honda and for Acura. <laughs> vehicles, uh, you know, is first rate, good fit and finish. Um, they, they just do interiors very well. Yeah. Sometimes uh, you might look at, at, at a certain Honda or Acura um, interior and think, well, it's, maybe it's not the most stylish, okay, but it's you know, it's, a, it's a durable interior. It's a, it's a, a very clean interior. Um, the the yeah. fit, in our opinion, is just you know, one of the best Honda interiors. Yeah, and very smart design, as you mentioned. So, uh, Tom, I'm sorry, we're running out of time now. We're going to publish all the lists also, a link to your story on our website so we can have it. Thank you very much for the information. I guess uh, people can uh, access wartsauto.com, right? Great. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, and have a great day. Okay. Thanks, Tom. Bye. Bye. Este programa fue una producción de National Latino Broadcasting. 